Welcome to TGIF. I like to do things with commitment, wouldn't you say? I would say. Uh, do you know those people who are just committed? They make a decision to do something and they commit. They give it their all and like passion and all of those things. And I think that in the Bible, we see a lot of that, wouldn't you say? I would say. Passion and commitment, but we also see kind of when people aren't really doing thing with that sincere commitment. Takes us to the word of the day, which is wholeheartedly. <laughs> right? Like wholeheartedly. Like when I say passion and commitment, do you think wholeheartedly? I mean, maybe we're going to, well, I think we're going to break that down as right. kind of our plan. But in the Bible, we see on every end of the spectrum. Yeah. We do know that the church gets addressed in in the later part of the Bible is fence sitters, right? Ooh. We're kind of, which way are you? Hot, cold, what are you? And so we're looking today though, we're going back as we're in Deuteronomy, a big chunk of Deuteronomy this time too. So if you didn't get it all read this time, uh, the next one's a little smaller, so maybe you can get caught up, but it is a big chunk. And we're looking specifically at Deuteronomy 6, verses four through seven. Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. <laughs> kind of a reminder there. Mm -hmm. uh, don't just keep them for yourself. You know, remind your children too. It's important because this is a very important piece of scripture for all, every generation. Mm -hmm. There, it's sometimes we forget. I mean, we may know, even as Christians, we know God's our Lord and Savior, but on some days it's just we're going through routine and going through the everyday uh, busyness. And Moses, remember, he is trying to prepare them. You are going into this promised land, which by the way, I'm not, I know he didn't dig it that way, but it's like <laughs> kind of that, I don't get to go to the promised land, but you all are going there. You're going there. And that's one thing we said today as we stand here going, as a believer, as a believer in Christ, you're going to this promised land, life eternal. But for these people, this time, this context is you're going into this promised land and you need to remember your Lord, your God, the only God. Do not get distracted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're going to get distracted over an, mm -hmm. a few times. So it is one thing to say you believe in God, but do you commit wholeheartedly not just on Sunday morning. So wholeheartedly is sincerity. Mm -hmm. It's a commitment with it's that even more, right? sincere it? purpose yeah. behind it. It's your whole, it's your whole being. It really is. It's like saying you're all into something that mm -hmm. you may love to do is easy at times, but mm -hmm. being all into what God wants you to do, mm -hmm. sometimes that's, that's hard. I don't want to go through that over there. I don't want to go through that struggle. Oh, and that thing I did before, I just want to keep it buried under the carpet. I don't want to address it again. So We've talked and listened about, you know, the listening, following, and trusting mm -hmm. and what that means. But now we're talking about wholeheartedly committing your life to God. Obviously, um, having no doubt and having great enthusiasm, I mean, that's great. Mm -hmm. But it's even deeper than that. Verse 3, listen closely, Israel, and be careful to obey. It's, it's like he's putting this blinker, the, you know, the caution sign mm -hmm. out in front of them. You know, curve ahead, warning, cliffs, danger, slow speed. It's like he's doing all that for them and saying, you've got to stay focused on this piece that God and God alone is your, you know, your everything. So it, it's hard. I can be passionate about my devotion in the morning, reading my scripture, having conversations around faith. I can be committed. That's all great and wonderful. But am I wholeheartedly committed to the plan God has for my life and the directions that sometimes it's going that it wasn't the direction that I wanted to go? Yeah. Did Paul want to end up in jail? Mm -hmm. I'm sure he had different plans of spreading the good news and yet look at where he ended up, but in those moments, it's making the choice. I mean, this is a huge piece of, of, of scripture we have, and so we're covering a lot. So how can we tie all this wholeheartedly into all of these little topics that go along? Right, because we cover in that if you did your reading, or if you're going to go catch up on your reading, we have the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. the privilege of holiness was in there, yeah. victory by God's grace, call to love and obedience, blessings in obedience, warning against idolatry, giving, 
celebration of Passover, justice, guidelines for a king, true and false prophets, regulations for many areas of life, including how we worship. And finally, in chapter 28, it was about a life of blessing versus a life of curse. And it was all around obedience. I mean, talk about a, a scare tactic. Like all of that was covered in this piece of scripture. Yeah, he, he's, he's taking them through a whole lot of information. Talk about information overload in these chapters. And I think it's important because for even us today, we need to understand that, you know, even as we go through life, that there's going to be things that come up that we won't have all the answers for, but being all into what God is calling us to do. So Israel find themselves in trouble carrying out obedience time to time. And I love how there's a part in there about the king. Uh, this is what you need. They don't have a king yet, right? They don't even have a king yet, but they know, Moses knows, God knows, they're gonna call mm -hmm. out for a king and want a king. So if you're gonna have a king, here's what you need to pay attention to. And so I think it's fascinating to me all the stuff that Moses and God pack into these, these chapters to remind people about the obedience and commitment to God. It can't just be for the law. Hmm. I, I can follow the law, mm -hmm. but to have my whole heart into the law, that gets challenging. That's what gets really challenging. And I think that that's why there's so much movement we see of God's people. The heart does not respond all that well to the law. If I give you a bunch of laws, your heart mm -hmm. doesn't really respond to it. Mm -hmm. Your heart responds to feelings. You know, the feelings is what moves you. Mm -hmm. So how can the law have feelings to move you? And that's when we're talking about God's word is alive and breathing. Mm -hmm. But God's going to carry us on. And we know that in the coming of Jesus, we get a whole, a greater and grander picture of what commitment means. Mm -hmm. Obviously going to the cross and you're, you know, giving your life. But also what commitment means in loving the Lord God with all your heart. Jesus grabs back to Deuteronomy in that moment when he tells people about the law. And it's in that moment that we see he even expands it to love your neighbor. And so I think it's, it's perfectly laying out the connection with the Old Testament and the New Testament because here we have, you know, Jesus using the Old Testament to draw attention to people and to remind them. And so in John 2, 24, but Jesus didn't trust them because he knew all about people. I mean, God, Jesus already knew that you know, we're going to fail. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have grace. That's why we have this, this encompassing of our lives around grace so that when we do fall, we know that uh, God is there and that we know forgiveness is there. So Jesus knows human nature. Nobody has to tell him about human nature. And each person's heart, he knows your heart. Jesus knows your heart, my heart, and their heart. So that's not what's in question here. It's questioning about, are you truly wholeheartedly following God? And that's hard. Right, Jeremiah 29, 13. If you look for me wholeheartedly, mm -hmm. you will find me. Yeah. I mean, if without the word wholeheartedly, if you look for me, you will find me. You know, knock and the door shall be open. We can just take those just kind of at surface mm -hmm. level. True. But Jeremiah clearly says, if you look for me wholeheartedly with that all of your being, that sincere commitment, mm -hmm. you will find me. And we like to find and look for God wholeheartedly when we need something, when we go with that laundry list, prayer list, sometimes that's what it is. But each and every day, are we wholeheartedly seeking God's will, God's love, God's mercy? Yeah, remember Mark 12, chapter 12, verse 30. Love the Lord God with what? Your mm -hmm. whole heart, mind, and soul. Yeah. So that's a lot that's to a lot. unpack with so many things. But if you go back and read, if, you're, if you really didn't do your reading, I mean, so many of the stories throughout all of these, when you're talking about worship and having idols and all of that, we struggle with all of that today. So to say the Old Testament doesn't really connect, it's we're those people. Yeah, we really are. But we're on this side of the cross. It's like we should know better. We've seen, sure. We know the God's kingdom that will come. Yeah. So our question for you as you reflect and think this week, are you following Jesus wholeheartedly every day? 
not just following them with your whole heart, hold heartedly that, that action, that full everything you are. I mean, and I'm the first to confess, wow, I think I fell short of that today, as a matter of fact. Mm. It's easy to get caught up in the circumstances yeah. and just kind of forget. And the busyness, for sure. So make it a great week, and we will see you next time. And for your reading in Deuteronomy, you're going to cover chapter 29 through 32. 32, so a little bit less reading, and we'll see you on episode three. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.